Come down to the Spring Fever Comedy Showcase at the Hidden History Museum on Saturday, April 13th, 2024 at 7 p.m. Get ready to group to great music, indulge in complimentary dinners and drinks, and brace yourself for an uproarious comedy extravaganza. Featuring the comedic talents of Tori Hart, Ron G, comedian CP, and many others, with dynamic boasting by Dwan B and Jarek. Don't miss out! RSVP now at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. That's HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Unmute itself. What's going on, guys? Just waiting on y'all to pop in the room. That's what I'm waiting on. Waiting on everybody to get in the room. How y'all doing, man? What's good with the fam? I ain't been on a Twitter live in a day or so, but I'm here. How's everybody living? Everybody pop on in the room. Let's chop up that good game as we always do. A little bit under the weather. I got a little sickness going on, but I'm 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 maintaining. So I'm in a little bit under the weather, but I'm still here for the family, ready to chop that thing up. <coughs> Excuse me. So you might hear a little coughing and grunting here and there, but it is what it is. Uh, let me start shouting out some of the regulars in the room. First of all, shout out to Miss Nikki the God. What's up, beloved? Y'all need to follow her. Shout out to Miss Trinity. Shout out to her. Who else we got down here? There's a lot of new faces in here. Shout out to the new faces. Shout out to all the new people. We'll have y'all call in. I see you down there, Miss Renee. I see you. What's up, Nathaniel, our resident white supremacist? Shout out to Nathaniel. All right. So we're going to get calls in a minute, family. We will get calls in a moment before we get started. Um, don't forget the movie Microphone Check will be in theaters next month in different locations around the country. Go to microphonecheck.com for info on what city the film will be playing in. It's very important that you go out and see this film with your friends, family, and colleagues because this is a movement. This is a truth movement. And it's about time the truth has been told. So I can't wait for you guys to see Microphone Check. I posted a video earlier, some dude over in Africa talking about rap started in damn northern Nigeria. Dude... <laughs> I don't have no more energy. That That's why we just did the whole movie. We got a whole movie to stop all of this nonsense. Everybody's trying to lay claim to what we created. And I'm just so sick of it. I, I'm, I cannot wait for you guys to see the film. That's going to shut down so much nonsense. Once and for all, it's, a, it's long overdue. It's so long overdue. And we're not dissing nobody in the film. That's another thing. A lot of people are spreading the rumor that the movie is going to be attacking Latinos. We don't attack Latinos in the movie, for the record. We're not attacking anybody. But we are setting the record straight. We are telling the truth about that 50-50, we created hip-hop together nonsense. We are definitely addressing that. We take our time to address that lie. And we, we address a, a lot of other lies, like hip-hop came from Jamaica. and uh, we, we clear up all the lies, and we bring receipts. So this is the must-see movie for the summer, ladies and gentlemen. So microphonecheck.com. Um, other things going on, what I really want to talk about before I get calls, I get calls in a second. And by the way, everybody retweet this live, retweet this on your page to let everybody know we're here. I saw, um, did y'all see the video of, um, what's it, Emmanuel Acho, that Nigerian former, well, who did he play for? I don't know who he played for. Him and his brother were NFL players. And Emmanuel Acho, he's on, was it ESPN? He's on one of them sports shows, and he all, he's always samboing it up. He has me blocked, because I didn't call out his samboing years ago. So he has me blocked, but um, he's the designated Sambo. I remember years ago, shout out to my dude Van Lathan, checked him because Emmanuel was talking about how he doesn't, because he, as a Nigerian, 
he don't have the trauma and the baggage of slavery so he can deal with white people better. It was some something Sambo as he said like that. And Van checked him on that, how offensive that sounded. Talking about how his lack of baggage that we have as foundational black Americans, he can, um, the, the dominant white society will gravitate to his narrative better. It was some, some way he was trying to word this nonsense, just an elaborate way to basically explain away his cooning. But recently on um, one of those sports shows, he was up here talking about Angel Reese and our good sister Angel Reese. You know, they had that big game and, um, you know, they lost. And Angel Reese was upset because a lot of the death threats and the racial targeting that they were getting. So she was upset. She was kind of crying a little bit after the game. And Emmanuel's ass got on TV like, oh, don't, you don't need to be crying now. You want to be a villain. You the villain. If you want to be the villain, you want to be the big bad wolf, don't cry like Courage, the cowardly dog now. Don't do that. Uh, that sister, look, Angel Reese did not and does not deserve racial threats and targeting because the white supremacists, they do have a bug in their ass about that sister. She's very competent and cocky on the court. So the white supremacists, they have a problem with that. And they always got a problem with that. They, they they want us to be humble, especially when we are playing white people. They don't want us bragging and rubbing it in their faces. They want us to be real humble. And on the court, Miss Angel Reese is not humble. She kind of gloats a little bit. It, 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 that's part of the game. But this woman getting all types of racial threats and the white supremacist media, and we're talking about mainstream media publications like the LA Times. Y'all saw that article they wrote. They had to, LA Times had to come out and apologize for their article because they were playing up this real weird racial angle to it because that's what it's really about. So the, the LA Times was talking about it's America's sweetheart. My phone was ringing. They were like, America's sweetheart, meaning the white girls, versus the dirty debutantes. Boy, they were using all of the little dirty little racial code words. The dirty debutantes. Yeah, what do you guys like? Do you like milk and cookies or Louisiana hot sauce? The article said that. Boy, the, the writer was putting all types of little racially tinged verbiage in the article. Yeah? And they had to come out and apologize. They had to come out and apologize to say, hey, you know, shit. You know, th that doesn't live up to our ethics and standards. You know? But Emmanuel Ocho, going back to him, that thing where he's sitting up here siding with the white supremacists against that sister, yeah, that shows the cowardly nature of a lot of tethers because he's a little grimy little tether. And that shows their mindset. And family, the, uh, too many of these tethers will side against us. They'll, they will jump right in line with the white supremacists to side against us big time. They will side against us like it's nothing. That's why every time we talk about reparations and all of that, we get some goofy gap to tether running around talking about what we, we you know, leave these white people alone, nigga. Leave these white people alone. You niggas don't deserve nothing, you know. So we keep getting that nonsense. But I think it's cowardly to sit up here and almost co-sign this girl getting denigrated. <clears throat> Excuse me. This girl getting racially denigrated. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry, guys. And I saw another video um, where this black woman was working in a store and it was a white male customer who came in kind of being belligerent and disrespectful and he got into it with the sister and it was a black dude, a very moist black dude kind of filming it. He was the co-worker 
And I think the white supremacist dude spit on the sister and called the sister a nigga and threw some stuff at it. And the sister was bucking up on him. You know, the sister didn't back down. But the dude, a lot of people looking at the dude like, damn, bro, you didn't, how come you didn't help that sister? Little moist boy. Moist or not, you could have got up and helped that sister. You don't let that sister deal with that white supremacist by her damn self. It, moist or not. Just because you moist, you don't sit there like a bitch. You don't let that sister have to put in that work by herself. See, they, these white supremacists know who to pull that stuff around when they try to buck up on a sister. There's certain folks you can't do that around, like me. You can't do that shit around me. There's certain brothers that that's just not acceptable. And listen, in our community, Foundation of Black American Community, historically, until very recently, because we got a lot of moist little soy milk ass dudes out here, but, man, listen, we didn't let, nobody could run up on no sister talking greasy, let alone harming her. And there's brothers around because that reflected on the brothers. Look, in the 1960s, you know, several riots got started because rumors of race soldiers harming black women. The, remember, the Watts riot, that got started because there was a rumor that a cop roughed up this black woman in Watts. So the brothers turned up. Out there in Philadelphia, there was a rumor that a, a black woman who was pregnant got killed by a cop. And them brothers start turning up out there in Philly in the 1960s. They got on the roof and start sniping. Yeah, if we found out that a sister got harmed, the black men would, would say, hey, 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 no, 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 no. That's not going to fly because it would reflect on the men. If you let the women get hemmed up, that, that shows your weakness as men to let women get hemmed up. You see, so we got to understand just the basic principles of manhood out here. And there's certain shit that just don't supposed to fly. You see a sister getting roughed up by a suspected white supremacist. You don't just kind of stand around and, you know, and no, 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 no. But let me get some calls in here because we do have a lot of people in here. We do have a lot of people in here and um, let's get... Um, uh, Mr. Badu, let's get Mr. Badu, then we get Brother E.N.J. Mr. Badu, what's up, brother? What's going on? Peace peace to you, uh, Tariq, man. I'm, it's, it's about damn near 2 o'clock over here on the east side, so I just wanted to come through and holler at you. Um, first of all, I've been enjoying the YouTubes, and I don't know where the hell you getting them thumbnails from, but they crack. Oh, yeah, me thumbnails the are up. classic. Oh, yeah, the hey, thumbnails are classic. Cracking yes, me the hell up, you know what I'm yes, saying? Sir. Um, second of all, Emmanuel, uh, Acho, the man got a book called uncomfortable conversations with a Jew. How far you think he was really going to back us up on that? I, I already, I already knew that shit was going to be some bullshit, man. So, uh, I, I don't even pretty much care about what he has to say, especially when it comes to our side and our people, you know what I'm saying? We love Angel. Keep doing your thing. You know, she's about to go into the, uh, she's about to go into the draft next year. So Good. we yes. look, yeah, so we definitely uh looking for her for that. And uh shout out to you with that deodorant too, man. Deodorant so good, white supremacist is using it. Hey, yes, I gotta sir. go ahead and order my damn self, man. My my That's man, good. I appreciate that. Yes, peace indeed. to you, family. Yes, sir. Let's get um Ab Abdul Diop. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's me. How's it going? I'm good. Now, how do you pronounce your name again? It's pronounced uh, Abdu. 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 Well, no. <coughs> Excuse me. What part of the Middle East are you from? <coughs> Middle East. Where are you from? I'm not from the Middle East. I'm from a. Uh, uh, oh, I live in Houston, Texas. But with that name, where, where's your family from? Oh, where my family from? Yeah. Oh, they're from Seneca. Seneca. Okay, there you go. All right. So, what's on your mind? Oh well, I mean, I just. You know, just like some of the political issues lately that's been on the news or anything like that. But, um, I don't know, probably about like a, you know, about a, a reparations and all. Okay, now what about reparations? Can you, can you take the earpiece out, brother? It's very hard to hear you, sir. Oh, I don't have an earpiece on. Can you hear me? Um, brother, how is your, bro, there's so much jankiness going on. Your phone is janky. You need a battery in your smoke alarm in the back. 
I hear some Jolof boiling on the stove. It's so much shit going on over there, brother. Yeah, you said that last time with a speaker. I mean, I mean, well, I have an iPhone Seven. I mean, I've had an iPhone Seven for for quite a long time now. Okay. Yeah. yeah a, a lot of stuff going on with your phone, brother. So yeah. now, what'd you say about reparations? Like what I was saying, like I mean, what I was thinking about reparations is that, like, like, um, like because okay, okay, let's say that the U.S. government does give reparations to uh, foundational Black Americans, you know, like to freedmen and all that, like for that. Like, because I've heard, like, because, um, because I, because I have heard that. Man, spit it out, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck is you talking about, man? Hurry up. People got some shit to say, some real shit to say. Uh, all right. Like, I mean, do you think, or do you think reparations would, like, would actually boost the economy? Absolutely. It'll 100% boost the economy because we're going to, um, circulate that money within the United States and we're going to create businesses within the United States. We're not going to send money nowhere. So it will 100% boost the economy. It'll be a great thing for the, the entire country. So brother ENJ, hop on brother. Hey, what's good with you Tariq? I'm good fam. How are you? Man, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I'm over here in Bakersfield, man. I just uh, hopped on here to salute you. You feel me? My man. How's everything up there in Bakersfield? We chilling, we chilling. But uh, I really wanted to tell you, man, like your name is really going around here. You know what I'm saying? Like I got black coworkers, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you all we talk about, man. So salute to you. You feel me? We be uh, up in our little, you know, our little spaces. You know, we be talking about what's going on with you and your page and, you know, how the uh, the white supremacists, they trying to talk about how, you know, CIE and all that nonsense. You feel me? So right. we appreciate you. Or we appreciate you. You feel me? Lacing us up. My man, now you're up there in Bakersville. You know they got that place called Allensworth up there by Bakersville. Oh, yeah, you sir. Speak. Have you been up there yet? Yeah, I was up there a couple times when I was, like, younger. I've been up there probably, like, since I was, like, seven, okay. uh, six. But, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, beautiful yeah. thing, beautiful thing. Beautiful thing, man. So, yeah, thank you so much, brother. Yeah, up, there by, up there by Bakersville. If you're in L.A., <clears throat> y'all need to go visit Baker um, about... Well, it's kind of about 30 minutes outside Bakersville. They had a black town, a little black village, kind of small area called Allensworth. It was an all black little area. And they had school. They had a little hotel there. Real nice little homes there back in the early 1900s. And the, the homes are still there. And basically the little area is like an open air museum. So it would be nice if y'all go up there and check that out. Um, it's a brother who was a foundational black American who was enslaved. He um, came out here and um, they just started a little black town. And, you know, the white supremacists started messing with the water supply and doing all that goofy stuff. And that's another thing. I saw some people with Diane Yap. Y'all know Diane Yap. She's um, the Asian anti-black racist who, you know, kisses up to white supremacists. <clears throat> some of her people were talking about how... Asians come over and they're so successful and they don't need white people or something. They can be successful without white people. I mean, if y'all don't stop, look, the Asian community, they are allowed to have certain levels of success because they're not targeted. The white supremacists, they don't target the Asian community. They give them an elevated protected status. You don't target the Asian community with some of the stuff that they do, even with the criminality, their criminality is not targeted. Man, you, you better understand, look, a lot of the drugs, the fentanyl, the guns, <clears throat> and other things come from them damn ships coming from Asia, all right? That's not blown up on the news every day. Their communities are not sabotaged and their water supplies are sabotaged. They, it, you don't do that to them. And when they did harm Asian people in the 1940s, they compensated them. They immediately they gave them reparations later on down the line. But Asians are not targeted. No, nobody's blowing up a damn Asian community like they did black communities. You don't have white people riding in, burning down their businesses like they've done to several black communities all over this country. They're not flooding Asian communities like they did black communities repeatedly. We think Oscarville and Lake Lanier is the only one. No, 
there were several towns in this country that they flooded. That's black towns that's underwater right now. They sat up here and flooded black towns all over the South Hill up there in Oregon. There was a black area that they allowed to be flooded. They always do that stuff. Even with Hurricane Katrina, that, uh, the, many people believe they allowed New Orleans to get flooded like that with them levees, that, that whole controversy about the levees out there in New Orleans. Yeah. Real interesting dynamic. But we got a lot of people in here. <clears throat> What's up, Sir Major? I see you, brother. Shout out to Brother Sir Major. Um, we are in here deep. And by the way, we got an event at the Hidden History Museum, April 13th. April 13th. Um, well, that's next weekend, not this weekend, but next weekend. Go to Hidden History Museum and come on through. We got a lot of great comics. Tori Hart. Um, Big Ja, very funny brother, um, CP the Comedian, and many, many others, So and, and Dwan B. <coughs> so y'all come on through. Nathaniel, what's up, brother? Tariq, what's up, my How you doing, I, the Jizzle Nizzle. How are you doing? I am chilling, man. How are you? I'm great. So just, I have a lot to talk about today because just a lot of stuff that I need to debunk from you in the past okay. month. Okay, let's go. Well, before I do that, let's just get into the logistics. So I heard there was this uh, Black History Club in South Central L.A. that has been open for about a year now. And I heard you have something to do with that. So congratulations on that. Yeah. The Black History Club, yeah, the, which is the museum. Yeah, yeah. The Black History Club. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on that. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And you can come on down. You can come on down. We... We we have um we're gonna have some holidays. We got hunky Halloween. We got Cracker Christmas. We got all types of little holidays that you can come through, man. Um, Meffed out Memorial Day, um, hunky Hanukkah, um, a, a, a lot of days that you can come on out. And, are you gonna uh, show? Enjoy. Are you gonna show microphone check at the museum? I don't know. I might. I don't know. But we got a big showing out at a theater here in L.A. at the Fine Arts Theater. Are you in L.A.? I uh, know. Speaking of that, I was looking at the microphone check website to see if you're going to have any shows in, in Iowa and I didn't see anything. So just want to let you know if, you know, I have a big basement in my trailer. So if you want to host it here, you know, I, we can get some tickets set up and I can host it here in my trailer park. Well, no, you probably have to get it off Amazon. And I think, um, you know, you got to give the right address and your trailer park number. I know sometimes those trailer parks, the, um, trailer number are a little different. They get confusing. So be sure to give the right trailer number. So what else is on your mind? Oh yeah, just one more thing. Um so I heard you're promoting root work again, which is just phenomenal deodorant. And did want to give my experience on using it for the past what about four months now. So last week I decided to stop using root work just to see how it would, you know, react with my body and I started using the more natural, or not more natural, but the more synthetic aluminum deodorant. And I found my arms to be, you know, significantly more heavy, which shows that root work, you know, the more natural ones are, it, they help with, you know, with the um, aluminum deodorants, your arms feel heavy and whatnot. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, but aluminum is very bad for you. That's why I created the deodorant. A lot of people get cancers and all types of stuff from that damn poisonous aluminum and all of that other deodorant chemicals that they have in regular deodorant so yeah so i'm i know there are many fba women here that are watching that may have the you know flabby chicken thigh arms and thighs that may be because of your deodorant it may not be because of your obesity so i would switch to the more natural root work that's on rootworkstyle.com and but, also get a but, 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 does that, but what but how does that how does the root work um, do for the flabby arm white supremacist women who look like honey boo boo in your community? How does it work for them? Because that's a lot of deodorant that needs to be put under that um, um, piglet looking flat. So how, how does that work for them? Well, our women have a lower BMI on average. Have you seen Gabby's Citibe? Well, yeah, she's not FBA. But um, yeah, y'all got some chunky little heifers out there in middle America now. Y'all just keep them hidden. Lizzo. Y'all don't like to put them on TV. Y'all got white Lizzo's all over the trailer parks. Patty LaBelle. Patty LaBelle is not overweight at Oprah. all. 
Mm-hmm. Oprah's not even overweight no more. She got her some Ozempic or something. But, okay. You know, yeah. Okay, but I did want to talk about um, just we have a lot to debunk here. Just so much to debunk. Well, first, like let's, let's talk about this astronaut that you talked about two weeks ago. How's that going? That black what astronaut. A- what astronaut are you talking about? Come on, Jerry. You know the black astronaut who took the photo behind the NASA background? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The brother. The brother worked for NASA. Yeah, what about him? <laughs> well, he's not exactly what you thought he was. Now is he? Yeah, I mean, he's a, a, an employee for NASA, so that's the important thing. You didn't hear about the abuse that he's been doing with black women? Mm-hmm. I heard. I heard he has some... <clears throat> relationship issues? No, not relationship issues. Three, come on, he's an abusive, you know, typical FBA uh, wife beating ghetto man. Dude, well, he's a twin to the people in your community. He learned it from your guys. The stats don't show that. Well, you guys are the kings and queens of abuse, just like Kyle Rittenhouse, your idol. Kyle Rittenhouse was on video whooping a girl's ass. So he's he's a twin with Kyle Rittenhouse. Right. So you, so you support SWSs? Oh uh, well, no. You support Kyle Rittenhouse, and Kyle Rittenhouse whooped the girl's ass on video. So that's your hero. You guys are parading him around and letting him do lectures at schools. Let me so, ask you this: If no, someone no, no. says <clears throat> no, 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 you're not going to be contradictory, all right? Because you guys have abusive white heroes all the time. All of your heroes are abusive. So I don't want to hear none of that. But let me get some more calls because yeah. now you basically. You're basically time wasting trolling. Um, Be tall. How are you? Hey, Tariq, can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you? I'm doing good. So I want to let me ask you. um, So, uh, what is your what do you believe that it is the response? As I know, you talk a lot about the problem of white supremacy and all that stuff. Do you think it's the responsibility of every um, black male to fight back against white supremacy? And black women, too. And every non-white person. And hell, some of the white people should fight against white supremacy. But the thing is, white supremacy gives the average white person an insurance policy that's worth a billion dollars. So it's hard for them to fight that billion-dollar insurance policy of protection, privileges, benefits, and, and other things. It's hard for them to say, hey, I don't want privileges I don't want to be a protected class, which are the, the dominant white society is a protected class. So it's hard for them to fight it. But it's every non-white person, it should be their responsibility to fight against that system, right? No, I, I don't think so. And here, here's, here's, what, here, here's what I think. I just found out. Well, I, I won't say I just found out, but um, I, rec- I guess recently found out, and I, and I know a lot of people in the chat some people in the chat have heard this statistic where 53 i think 53 percent of black men don't even have children so if you're a childless man do you think a man who's childless who has no bloodline do you think it's he has a responsibility to fight white supremacy why or why not that's random as hell i don't i don't even understand the correlation between not having a child and fighting white supremacy. What kind of correlation is that? Uh, that, that, because, that makes- because, because if you have no bloodline, I mean, you have no stake in the future. So why why would it be your responsibility to fight back against white supremacy? Like, Because we're not likely to solve this problem in our lifetime. So if you're a childless man, what would it benefit you? And you have no kids. So what, what would be the point? <laughs> um, because you're not supposed to have a system of injustice. If the minute you sit here and accept injustice you become a coward that's what a coward does <laughs> where's your family from by the way uh, my family um my family's from the bahamas uh you go there you go no when i they, listen I, I when they when they get to the u.s um they came here um i think in the like late 80s early 90s something right. like that yeah so again that mentality that you guys have where <laughs> you're going <laughs> to flee no, um, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's no, fleeing. No, no, because I... Cause That's the problem. That's no, the no, problem. No, no, no. I, I, I used to be on board with the whole 
you know, fight back against white supremacy and all this. I used to be on board with that stuff, but the more and more I think about it and I think about issues going on with black people and I look at black women's behavior and I think about the number of childless men out there. I think I think if you're one of the 53% of black men in America who has no children, I don't think you have any business fighting back against white supremacy. I don't think that's really your problem. FBA, FBA family, just soak it in. FBA family, soak this in. Soak it in. Soak it in. Yes, so there is a reason. The 53% of men who, have, who are childless, delineate. let it soak in. That's why we delineate, because that cowardly <laughs> mindset is something that we don't allow in our circles, sir. That's not how you do things, sir. If we were cowardly like you're talking, you wouldn't have Elaine to come over here from the Bahamas. Somebody had to fight these people in order to make a lane for other non-white people to eat. Tariq, let me say this. If 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 I if 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 you're a black man in this country, if it if, if you had a child, I it, it makes total sense why you would want to fight back against a corrupt system because you, you have a stake in the future, you have a bloodline. But if you're childless, I I think it makes no sense. I, I you, this is the one that's, life you that's, have. That's just some cowardly stuff you didn't came up with in order to justify that Caribbean cowardice, <laughs> fleeing Caribbean cowardice that you're trying to infuse us with. We ain't buying it, brother. If you want to be a coward, knock yourself out. All right, we ain't sitting up here bowing down to no damn white supremacists. We're trying to re replace white supremacy with a system of justice, child or no child, don't matter. Because we have to deal with white supremacists. Forget the children. The children have to deal with it and we have to deal with it. All of us have to deal with but, systematic white supremacy. So we stand up against it. Y y sure, sure. But I, what I'm saying is I don't think this problem is going to... Well, let's be honest. I mean, could we, could we solve white supremacy in our lifetime? Is it possible? Yes, it's not likely to happen in our lifetime. But, I, but if you have offspring, yes, you do it to give your offspring a better future. That makes sense. But if you're childless, you stand, I mean, I think you stand to benefit nothing from wasting the one life you have trying to fight for a better future for someone else's offspring. I, I just don't think it makes that's, sense. That's the fleeing mindset. <laughs> is that We're glad to be out of the Bahamas. We'll take white supremacy just as long as we ain't got to be in our failed homeland. That's what you're trying to say, sir. That's all you're trying to say. White supremacy is okay. It's better than my failed homeland. I'd rather be over here dealing with some white supremacy than being in the Bahamas in a shanty town wiping my ass with a banana leaf. Right? That's what you're trying to say, sir. And that's cowardly. We don't think like that as foundational black Americans. We th These people aren't doing us a favor. See, deep down, y'all think, a lot of y'all who are non-FBA, y'all think that the white supremacists are doing you a favor that running water in a flushing toilet that's a come up to you so you don't I, want to rock that boat i, I mean let's, yeah let's I, keep, I, I, that's right that's right well, right well, 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 no, no 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 well, i i, I think i think i think that um i think yeah i think america is great um i think that um i think that the situation for black people in america is a lot better than it would be elsewhere um y y y so i think that's yeah tether I, I, talk. I that's tether talk we don't look at it like that. We don't think, okay, white supremacy is okay. It's better than, you know, we, no, 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 no. Because we created all of this shit. We created shit from scratch. Most of the inventions that you have in your home, we had a hand in it. So we don't look at these people as doing us a favor. We've always, as foundational black Americans, had to get it out the damn mud. So we don't look at them as doing us no favors whatsoever. Okay. So that's why we look at white supremacy differently. Right. Now you, on the other hand, y'all came from a place where it wasn't popular. <laughs> The, the British smack you around and, and you know left you with no resources. So y'all got on the first thing smoking over here to be around us. And we had to fight these white supremacists in order to make a lane for you. So somebody has to stand up to but, the white supremacists, brother. T T Tariq, how do you, how do you know? I, I might be a foundational black American. You don't know a lot, a lot, a lot of, a lot of family was from the Bahamas. What are you no, I'm saying, about? I'm saying a lot of, a lot of, a lot of the slaves in America went to the bahamas so I, I, you don't know i might be fba Tariq. we might be family you no, don't know no you're not no you're not <laughs> you are a tether you're not fba <laughs> you are 100 tether you do not have the majora spirit that we have talking you know, that 
let's leave. Ooh, the white supremacy ain't that bad. Let's not talk about it. You don't know. That ain't no, you no, 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 no. You different, brother. You are I mean, not F A. We know you ain't F. To, hey, well, Tariq, you know, hey, you know what I'm saying? I, I think we'll agree to disagree. I know you got other calls. I'll land my yeah. plane. Hey, Thank can't you. wait for the mic. Yeah, all right. Yeah, y- y- y'all not going to sit here and try to cosplay as us no more. Those, that's over. Y'all not going to sit here and try to act like us. We, we're we calling you out. We see you. See, a lot of the, these guys thought that they can just kind of blend in. Now we, we're... We're listening to some of the shit y'all say, and we're like, hey, 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 man, where, where, where are you from, bro? What you saying don't sound right. This guy and the Emmanuel Achos, all of that Sam Bowen, no, we're, no, that ain't us, man. Y'all not going to sit up here and act like, act like our representatives. Y'all not going to represent us with all that damn Tether Coonan. And um, there's a lot of threads going around where a lot of African people are trying to do this real weird comparison saying that we all look alike. Like you'll, you'll get like an African person posting a, like an African girl posting a picture of herself next to Kelly Rowland. Hey, we, we look alike. And you have some, um, like East African men or West African men posting a picture of themselves next to to Denzel or somebody. Oh, we look alike. We, we, we look alike. No, no, not not really, man. We, I don't. We can tell. I think a lot of these cats get mad because we can tell that you're not. If we we can look at you and tell, that's not a diss. We can kind of look at people and say, okay, what part of East Africa are you from? Uh, what nigga? I'm from Ethiopia. Uh, how did you know? Well, nigga, you look like a black Tweety Bird with that head. That's how I know. I mean, you're not fooling nobody. We 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 know. Just like when we go over there, y'all know we're not from over there. That's not an insult. I'm not insulting anybody, but we we know. We know what we look like, and we know what you look like. And you know, in many cases, we look different. Now, every now and then, you might have somebody who might have the same phenotype as the foundation of black American, but then there's something that'll let you know that that person is not FBA. You know, the, that hairline don't lie. The hairline ain't gonna lie. You see them hairlines and, and the women, there's some women over there, and I'm not dissing the women over in Africa, very beautiful women over there. There's some very lovely sisters over there. But then we can look at certain things and tell they're not FBA. We can look at them wigs, some of them wigs don't be clicking like they're supposed to. Well, hold on. I ain't no FBA woman walking around with that kind of wig. And also, some of them women feet over there. That's the real telltale. You see some of them women feet. Like, oh, damn. Man, what part of Uganda are you from? You know, we, we can tell. We can tell. And that's not an insult. We just, we can tell. <laughs> 